Uh, why? So you you're brought up in that kind of in that environment, mm -hmm. and uh, um, that per se is the making of who we know Gowi to be. Mm -hmm. And uh, from let me fast forward to the '90s. You've gone to school, you've come back, and uh, um, the second liberation. You are part of. I remember on TV you're seeing tear gas. <laughs> <laughs> when when you when uh, Joya was being beaten, yeah, I was there. Yeah, what's what was that like, and what what informed that? Like you had your papers, I, you'd have come back. Yes, yes, yes. When we own. when we were when we were in the US, yeah, mm -hmm. and we you know I, I managed to um, uh, secure a scholarship, uh, partial scholarship, which ended up becoming a full scholarship. What did you study there? Economics and political science, <laughs> and I'm a pastor now. <laughs> What? <laughs> I, find, I actually wanted to do computer science uh -huh. and economics. Uh -huh. Thank but, God you did. But computer science was because that's where the money was. Yeah. You know the way you could see <laughs> computer science is the thing. Yeah. Now looking back, I would have made money. Yeah, yeah, man. yeah. yeah. you see where computer <laughs> guys are. Like, Dang. Dang. Right. <laughs> the internet boom. Danny, Danny, But as I went to the US and I began to see how systems work, mm -hmm. And um, this is where my mother and my father went to school. And now I began to understand, oh, this is why they were seeing how it could work. I'm like, why am I thinking about money? Why don't I think about really what impact I can do? And it is in my first year of uh, in school, I decided I'm going to go back to Kenya. I don't know when it is, but I'll go back. And so I made a decision to live simple, frugal. Do you know in the US, mm -hmm. I never owned a television. Mm -hmm. I never owned a car. I, I mm -hmm. purposely, and this was intentional. I, I, I when I, I lived in place, I either chose to live on campus, which was a cheap place to stay, mm -hmm. even with the option of living off campus and stuff. So you live in campus housing, you know, first in the dorms and then there were campus apartments. But also it was just a place to continue to live simple because I knew when I come back to Kenya, I'll be forced to leave him. Came mm -hmm. back and the idealist, the, I think I've been idealist mm -hmm. at that point, that I was coming back to do stuff. But what I said was I wanted to make lots of money to assist what was going on. Mm -hmm. But when I was coming here and I was talking to my peers, my peers were in the rat race. Mm -hmm. Men and they were making money. Yeah. Okay. And I was like, you guys are not seeing what's going on. And uh, you guys can't, I mean, you, you, this is not bothering you. Because when I came back, Kenya had regressed. Mm -hmm. It had regressed so much. I was like, dang. And guys were not, my peers were not engaging. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, I shared this with my father. And my father was like, yeah, get, get in line. <laughs> but this was a man who was beaten. Mm -hmm. He was tired but they still had to do work. Mm -hmm. um, people of the first liberation were beginning to die off. Mm -hmm. This was in the 90s. And so now into the late 90s, people were, And I was like, so what goes on with these things? Like, don't, I mean, mm -hmm. you have to do stuff. So I like, so I asked my father, so who, who do we talk to and stuff? He's like, even some of these guys who started multi-party, mm -hmm. <laughs> I said, you're Kamasa talking Harris. about your yeah. your contemporaries your and your friends. Are like, yeah, yeah, some of them have betrayed. Mm. I was like, right. <laughs> right. And so he, my father told me one thing. It's like, your generation is sleeping. When he told me that, I was like, you know, you're right. Mm. And so that time, the constitution thing was big. And I said, I started following what was going on. And they were having something out at, uh, what was this place called? A safari Park. Mm -hmm. The first constitutional conference meeting something. So we went to, Saf I went to Safari Park. I wanted to go in. So you just got on a March bus, March, whatever it was. All the way, yeah. went there. And just the, and the gates were closed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wanted to go in and just see. And we were not allowed in. I 
I'm like, why aren't we allowed in, you know, and that. And so there were many other wanainchi. This mm-hmm. is where I got to realize it. Wanainchi, I mean, they were very interested mm-hmm. that. But the thing about all of us, we were all unemployed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> all of us were unemployed. Mm-hmm. But if you listen to how these guys were talking, these guys were talking like me. They were intelligent. Mm-hmm. They were sharp. They were witty. And you get to know these guys are graduates from the University of Nairobi, Moi University, mm-hmm. um, University of Pune, New Delhi. And guys like, dude, man, where have you gone? Cape Town University. And they came back and they didn't have jobs. That's where the National Youth Lobby for Reform began, mm-hmm. at the gate of Safari, of Safari, Safari Park. Park. So these are, that's so interesting. So you're basically, the, we're saying like the guys who would see demonstrating on TV, if you're yes. not in part of a demo, yeah. is uh, a good chunk of those guys are educated. Not a good chunk, uh, a good number of them. Of course, there's also the yeah. the, the bigger masses that yeah. are there. But yeah. some of the guys who are there were genuinely wanted to get involved in this thing. They didn't know how. So, Safari Park 2, we went. Mm-hmm. But this time, I didn't know what was going. Guys were saying we're going in. We were chased with tear gas. <laughs> so, and, uh, yeah. and once I was chased with tear gas, that is when it all clicked. It clicked for me and says, this can't happen anymore. I'm like, we want reforms in our country. This is, and I'm being told I can't participate. Mm. This is when I said, no. Enough is enough. That's when I started going for Kwandamana uh, Arabarani. <laughs> so, and what, like, what, uh, at a personal level, what were you, uh, what, what were you going out there to do? I wanted to participate. Yeah. I wanted mm. to be part and parcel of deciding where our country was going to go. Mm. And what were you seeing in your mind? What, if you are, if you considered yourself an idealist at that time, mm-hmm. what was the picture? The picture was a, a Kenya where things work. Mm-hmm. Because I remember as I was growing up, for those who lived in the city, do you know there was a Kenya bus that went all the way from Buruburu to Udiru, mm-hmm. number 22. Mm-hmm. And it would come, stop at bus station, get out the thing bus station was like a connection point Mm -hmm. guys terminate guys from eastlands do that and then go all the way to Udiru. and this bus would be on time i'm not saying kenya was perfect but things used to work when it came to examinations there was not this leakage that we were hearing that we had and kenya just seemed to just go from bad to worse city planning ended there was pilferage and pilferage of uh, of our resources and stuff and for me i was like how what happened land had been grabbed um uh, and more and more people were being harassed for actually speaking out and nothing was being done to the government and guys didn't give jack <laughs> for me what i envisioned to answer your question for me what i envisioned was Systems that have to be working, and if I'm going to do, let me benefit somewhat from systems that work, and if not me, generations that come after me. Let's see these things happen because mm-hmm. Kenya it was a good idea, you know. But more so, I'm I believe that I was also a Christian, I've been praying for my country. But there are places where you, you put your prayers in action, and I said, I'm not just going to pray and not act. So mm. that was part of my civic duty. Mm. Uh, yes. So fast forward, you're, it's not just uh, the reform that you're actively involved in, mm. but you're also a church leader. Yeah. You see, when I came back from the US, I got in the church, and, mm-hmm. you know, got involved in the church and stuff like that. And because of my education and also looking for jobs, I started getting job offers. Mm -hmm. And this was from blue chip companies, Mm -hmm. Fortune 500 companies. And I remember the one time I had four or five job offers, Mm -hmm. all happening around the same time. And I I made a value thing and I said, no, I'm not going to go for the money. I'm going to go for what I'm passionate about. And at that time, it was young people in the church. I wanted to be able to see a generation of young people who are discipled in the faith of Jesus Christ, but actively participating mm-hmm. in their generation. If you read the book of Samuel, Second Samuel, it's, it's the, the last part of Samuel, the right of Samuel, closes the chapter and says, Jane, and David served his generation 
and his time. Mm -hmm. I wanted to see these young people serve their generation at their time. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I was at the helm of that. At the same time, nationally, what was happening politically, even in the church, there was at this beginning of the youth bunch and churches were not, they didn't have youth ministries. Mm -hmm. At that time, we did a survey. Only two churches had paid youth pastors. Mm -hmm. And well, define youth, what, what age bracket? Are you this was about? teens and mm -hmm. early 20s. Mm -hmm. In fact, I still do it that way. I don't know why guys define this thing as 35. <laughs> How can a 35 person Yeah, yeah we are youth. They are not youth. <laughs> we are youth. Those are overgrown <laughs> babies then. <laughs> hey, hey. Hey. You know, and understand, you know, up until 22, 24, mm -hmm. you know. But after that, you're grown adult, man. You're grown man, you know. Jisot. Mm -hmm. Jisot. Yeah. So I understand that. But you're youthful, but you're not youth. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, I, that was a political definition of youth in our laws. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, so to speak, uh, where was I? So you've, uh, you're passionate about... Yes. So I was involved about... in the church, and I ended up working within the church, um... And I, I worked with a youth ministry serving organization, the national one, that got me to travel all over the world. And that was an awesome, awesome time. And um, the, my boss at that time was a, um, this great visionary, and I learned a lot from him, yeah, a gentleman from uh, Sierra Leone. Mm -hmm. Then I left that and I joined the church as a youth pastor. And it is in the church that I was that I actually had the freedom to do this more. And that's why I love my church, Nairobi Chapel, where I've been. Had the place of engaging, wrestling with these issues, getting a generation to engage in what's going on in society. So I never stopped. And so uh, I got involved in that. And so in as much as I'm here, I'm a youth pastor, part of the National Youth Liberation, uh, sorry, National Youth Lobby for Reform, mm -hmm. you know. And so I'd, I'd be able to double with that. And uh, when th we needed to go to the streets, we mm. went. Mm. Um, when we needed to stop um, <laughs> traffic, you know, we mm. did that mm. uh, for the sake of just getting the attention. Um, and I think there was a time for that mm. then. Um, and once Yote Yawezekana came, um, I think we started having governments and even this current government responds much more to that government of those days. Gotcha. What's the way forward? And <sighs> Yani, well, my, I think the biggest problem that we're having right now um, is poverty and youth unemployment. Uh, and I think the frustration is that you want to now put food on the table and there is a place where people want to do dignified work. Uh, and when you're not given that opportunity, it now begins to be very frustrating. And the things that you can do and won't be able to do. Like today, I mean... Everybody now is betting because it's mm. looking like it's a shortcut mm, to, to get money. 210 million. <laughs> yeah, this guy who won the jackpot. Yeah, you yeah. know, it's a one in 10 million chance to win the jackpot. Mm -hmm. You know, but this is what people have decided they're going to do. Mm. Okay, I, I'll do that. People are taking any shortcut. Today, you have um, a, a young, intelligent woman who has everything going for herself, looking at an older man who can. Um, uh, can subsidize her lifestyle mm. and, and vice versa for some guys, you know, <laughs> and then and vice versa for guys. Yeah. You know, the ladies now are here are called sponsors, yeah. uh, you know, the yeah. men are called sponsors, yeah. and the women are called blessers <laughs> or something that is not dignifying, that, that is demeaning. I don't think these young men and young women like what they do. If they'd have a choice, they'd do something else, mm. you know, they do have a choice. But it, it, it just seems that it is a, a hard choice for them to make. Um, and, and so this is what poverty does. And so people are, are out to do anything. And, and so I can't give a tier one answer solution. I think you've asked a very difficult question. And um, there are places that this thing can be answered at the policy level. There are places this thing can be answered with the church and other faith-based organizations. There are places where, and the church has been trying, uh, where civil society have tried to do this. But I think it's a place where you you do it collectively. They work together. But at the end of the day, you are the, you determine your own destiny. And I think people need to be able to understand that, that no government, uh, 
no church nothing can be able to determine your destiny apart from you you need to make a choice for yourself that's what i need to be able to tell the young people uh, i'm not saying it's going to be easy to get out of the situation or the rut unemployment the poverty and stuff or the opportunities but you have to make a decision for yourself and work towards it nothing comes easy that winning from the can i, can I tell you my philosophy around that?